This episode was made possible through the continuing support of my very good friend Michael Loftus and viewers just like you. For more information, check out the links below. Thanks. Hi there, guys, and welcome back to the shop. I'm here today with... Paul Kidwell. Hi, boss. How you doing? So, I've been doing this little series on high-voltage stuff, and yep. now I'm trying to get you in on it, so I'm scheduling high-voltage shoots when you happen to be in town. I try. The next step in the process... Yes? We have a difficult needle to thread. Okay. I want to teach the fundamentals of inductive current limiting focused with, with the perspective of average high school kid in the home shop, okay? okay? Which means no heavy equipment, no forklifts, no giant pole pigs. We can't do the ring of fire, things like that that we're used to. No fun and stuff. And we can't delve into the theory. So how do you teach inductive current limiting without getting heavy into theory? A little theory maybe, but I don't want to, I don't want to alienate people from this. Okay. Because they're going to have to learn the theory. Like if they go get an E degree or something like that, they're going to have to learn the theory. But for average person screwing around in a home shop. So like the kid that's pulling apart things and seeing what he can do with what he And we can't found. use any exotic tools. So we can totally use a regular digital multimeter. DMM's fine. But we can't break out the fancy RCL inductance meter. Okay, because so no, nobody has those. Normal people don't have that stuff. So, so we gotta we gotta thread this needle delicately. Okay. So I'm gonna start hooking stuff up, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the fancy fancy current meter, which we're gonna drop like right there so they can see it on camera. Okay. And and we're gonna we're gonna measure. Yeah, because we can do voltage or current with this. Okay. Yeah. What I have is we just built our nifty power supply in okay. the last video and to power this right off the variac okay okay you want me to start plugging things sure in? you can plug that in just don't plug the variac in you should have the seat look look safety plugs in your pocket plugs okay. in the pocket so we've got our meter we got a meter now well, this is my plan okay we're going to hook it all up with the inductive current limiting in place okay. because I have a beautiful Hammond 195T5. Uh, this is a, a five amp inductive current limiter. It's a hundred uh, millihenry reactor, and this will limit at, us to five amps. At five amps. At okay. five amps DC. Right. So this will limit us to about five amps, and the the Variac has a thermal circuit breaker calibrated to five amps, okay. right? Which is awesome. Because no matter what stupidity we do here, I don't have to worry about tripping a breaker and having to run to the other room and all that jazz. It's it's five amps, we're, that one we're super low, we're super safe. Okay? okay. So I have a microwave oven transformer. Okay. Now this thing will, it's a MOT, it's a generic MOT. It will absolutely draw easily in excess of 20, 30 amps on its own. Yes. And it'll melt itself down, but that's right. a future video. So this will definitely draw more than five amps. Yes. So this should limit us to five amps. So the idea is we hook it up, we take some measurements, breaker doesn't trip. Right. We disconnect this, hook it up like somebody might, if they're screwing around at home, breaker should trip in a second. Right. Less than a second. So what I'm gonna do first is, I'm, I'm gonna let you talk about this while I start hooking things up. Um, I'm gonna just hook up our Jesus stick here for the safety. Okay. So you're putting the, the, the ground on your Jesus stick right on the frame. Of right the on the frame of the mot because... The frame is one side of the secondary winding. Yes. The, yes. That's, that's how mots are built because cheap. Because cheap, yes. And you left the shunts in. You, I see you clipped off the... There, there are shunts in here. I had... Um, sitting over here, um, we, when we cleaned everything, it was put away, but I had, out of a different one, I kept the shunts so that we okay. could show some of the shunts, but now those are put away. So. All right, and I see you clipped the filament winding off. I completely. didn't remove every last trace of the filament winding, but I removed most of the filament winding. Okay. Now, so, this we made so that we have switches here. So we can control things. So I have an extra level of safety, so I can yes. turn that off. So I'm going to, before I even plug that in, I'm going to take our ends here. Now, I don't have... And this saddens me. I got all my fancy test leads. They don't come in white. 
Lovely. But I got black and red, so I'll just do black to black, and the part of white today will be played by the red test lead. Okay. And I'm just going to set this well aside for the safeties. Okay. okay. And I'm going to, so that'll go there to here, and to start out with, we're going to go through neutral the, there. Through the inductor. Through react. the inductor. And that was hot there, not neutral. Yeah, that's hot there. Neutral so over here. Hot through the thing. And, then, and the then we come off the other side. The output of the reactor goes into hot on the mod. Yep. So we're, it's, it's a, a loop through this. Yeah. Okay. And, and this is very complicated in what we've, because we have all this extra stuff going on, but this is our wall socket. We just have a very well controlled and regulated wall socket. You could so, use a power strip with the little Temenamp breaker to this get is some way modicum. more robust, way safer. Yeah. So I'm going to plug that in there. The kid at, the, at home. The kid at home. Yep. Can get All a, right. a power strip, has a 10-amp so, breaker. That'll at least protect you a little. So I'm going to take these out. We're going to have to talk about the test leads, but I'm not going to do it right now. That'll, that'll be, we'll do a little video on that. So I'm going to just grab current right here. Yep. And we'll set this to wavy A's. Wavy A's. Wavy A's. Mm -hmm. And... And they can read that so they can see the current we've got going on. Yep. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my shades. Because safety. For safety. And, and pull this down. Okay. For safety. Now, I'm going to actually pull an arc on here. I'll try to pull an arc. I don't even think we'll get much of an arc at the first level with, with it restricted so much. But... If I can't get any kind of an arc, really, I'll just touch this on here and hold it there. This is probably going to start smoking and stuff. But uh, it'll give us the maximum amps because I'll be running into a dead short. Sure thing. Okay, so that'll so, tell us exactly what this will limit to at 120 volts. Very so, arc is off and at zero. All right, I'm going to arm the outlet plug is, here. Plug is still in my pocket. All right, I'm going to arm this. Okay. Go ahead and plug it in. All right. We're hot. Okay, okay, you're hot. I have the end of the Jesus stick. Okay, ready to turn on? Do it. Turning on, we are at so zero volts. We're well clear at the moment. Bring that right up to 120. Zoom, 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 zoom. 120. All right, now just at this moment, we're not drawing a load. Everything's hot. Yes. But all of the energy we're using is just lighting up the core here and the core there and the windings yeah. now. This is just magnetostriction, magnetorelactance. This is. We're fluxing around. Yes. And that we're just tiny amounts of heat are being made. And so, we're using 0.78 amps. Yes. To do nothing. Just to magnetize the course. It's just magnetizing the course. All yes. right. So that's our, our idle state with this in circuit is 0.77. All yes. right. So I'm going to make a note of that. Because I want to see how that changes when we remove the inductor. So with... With inductor is 0 0.78. 0 0.78. Yes. Okay, and that's with the inductor. Now, and let's hit it with a load. You ready? Go for it. I'm going to come in really gentle and see if I can make that arc. Well, you got a little teeny tiny arc, and we're seeing 2 amps. I saw 2.01. You're down to 1.66. 1 1.6. 1 so about 1.6. All yes. right, and if I just straight touch it, you're at 2.35, right. 2.36. So 2.35 is our max. Yes. Right? Okay. With inductor. We're doing science because we're writing we're it writing down. We're writing it down. Well, we're, we're documenting it for people. True. All right. So that's the width. All right. So shut it down. Off. Off. Grounding, 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 safe, safe, safe. Okay. Want the plug in my pocket? Dirt, dirt, dirt. Plugs in your pocket. You're not, happy. Not Switch. yet. Switch. We'll put the plug in your pocket. I'm also going to turn this off. You just turned it on because I turned it off already. I'm turning it off. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we're just going to take this right out of the circuit. Yep. And, and I'm going to I'm going to set the inductor aside over here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to wire this straight in. Now this is. Mott to the wall, right. just straight mott to the wall. This is bad mojo. Um, and what we're going to do here is draw way more current because now we've removed our nice, happy current limiting inductor. And this is where everybody's going to be like, yay, current limiting inductors are cool. So 
All right. Okay. This is hot. Plug it in. We're plugged in and ready to switch on. Yes. Switch. Oh, do we have a right. uh, do we have a hold function on here? We w yes. Just we'll, All right. We'll, we'll do it more than once, but for, okay. for now, just do it and see what it does, and then we'll do the max hold. All right. Okay. When you're ready, sir. All right. We are now on. And wait a minute. We want to get the low. So, yep. Our nominal is 4.8. Yes. Which is a lot higher. Do you remember what the other one was? 0.78. What are we holding at? 4.6. 4. Why is it changing? Um, I'm going to say 4.6. It's 4. not changing 6. by much. It's like 4.71, 4.68. So, originally, our idle current was 0.78 yes 0 0.78 now yes. we're pulling nearly five amps and we're not doing anything we're almost yet. to tripping that breaker and we haven't even done anything all yet. right you ready go for it do you want to set your max hold now because this isn't going to live for long okay hold on all right kill it kill it for safety okay we need there's max there's min there's average there's max, max. that's max we are okay. at max all right flip it on we are on I can hear it humming. That we spiked out at four six, six point four six because it spiked with the inductive kick. The, the initial surge. All right. Yep. Clear. And there's forty seven amps. <laughs> forty seven amps. I heard a little ping like that tripped right. That was less than a second. Yes. So forty seven point zero nine amps. Yes. I'll make you know that. Quite a bit more than the 2.35 we were doing before. Yes. Our, so, our uh, initially 0.78 amps, this is with current limiting, and it maxed out at 2.35. Yes. Okay. Without current limiting, 4.6 at idle, and maxed out at 47 amps. Now, 47 yeah. amps, we're all safe. Plug in your pocket. Plug in my pocket. Okay. 47 amps through 14 gauge wire? I think that's probably 14. It, it, it looks like about 14. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm saying that's 14 gauge wire. So 47 amps through 14 gauge wire. Um, so we need to test this. You're giving me that look, Mr. Kidwell. Um, can you scrounge me some mots, please? I will scrounge you some mots. I think I can get you a couple, like, right away. On your next trip... Yes? We're going to have to go to, to a shop somewhere, because I don't have the current capacity for it, but I know a guy. Okay. I got an idea. And we're, we're going to do a test of how long an uh, unthrottled microwave oven transformer can survive. Okay. It's going to be less than five minutes. There's, there's no way we get five minutes out of it. That, that's my bet. I'm can, saying that now just on that, at that, five minutes. I recall maybe. us using MOTS you know, with shorted secondary as a current limiter for a pole pig. Yeah. And we've, we actually used two. We put one on either side of the pig yep. as it was feeding. In series, in. I remember in that. Se yep. God, that it was worked. Back in Keizu. It yeah. worked for short runs, but just the act of tuning the Tesla coil heated them up enough that they were smoking. Yes, I recall that. That was. That was the heavy industries lab. Yes, that was good old days, fun times. That's back when we were young and pretty. All right, so there's a quick look at inductive current limiting without getting deep into the theory. The short thing is it works, it's wonderfully efficient, and you can you change the size of the inductor to get the current that you want, and, and you set that as a maximum that you're willing to work up to. Yes. And we're going to be doing some fun things with not just inductive current limiting, but variable inductive current limiting, because mm -hmm. I have that. Ah, yes. And that is going to hook up to that, so that can move that with remote controls, and we'll have remote control variable inductive current limiting. That'll be fun. Big ass box of awesome science and engineering coolness. And that's going to be like five videos. It's, it's going to be cool. The okay. things that are coming in the future. But that is your quick, basic beginner's look at inductive current limiting with Mr. Gadwell and Chris Bowden. You guys have fun. And as always, we'll see you next time.